What is up guys, Speed here, and today we're going to be doing an episode of Guess the Rank. I'm excited for this one, it's been a bit, I think, uh, what, like a week or so now? So yeah, I'm trying to keep these up, weekly episodes, if you want to keep weekly episodes of Guess the Rank going. I, uh, you know, if you want to get your game looked at and learn in this format, I would appreciate it if you could like the video to let me know that you guys are still enjoying the series, and so that the video does better, because every single like that you guys put in, I would say it shares it to another, like, I don't know, 10 or something people, so... I really would appreciate it if you guys could click the like button, it helps me out a ton. And now let's get into this first clip where we'll be looking at two of spades, one, I don't know what that means, bristleback. Also on top of that, I just want to quickly tell you about the Game Leap website and what I've been working on. So today what I'll be doing is looking at a professional match, doing a draft analysis of that match, and then showing you how it plays out. So it's really this cool format that I've been working on as of late. Uh, I've done an, oh I forget the exact, I think it was OG versus Enigma. I just posted that over there as well. So you guys are going to be able to get that top tier content where I'm talking about drafts, how to know when to pick certain heroes, what item builds they go, how they progress through the laning stage, what lane swaps they make, a lot of advanced concepts that if applied in your pubs will win you free MMR. So if you guys are interested in that, go check it out. Click the link down below. You'll get a 25% discount for your first month. And uh, I hope to see you there. So yeah, click the link down below. All right, let's head into two of spades gameplay. It looks like he's playing Bristleback. Personally, I'm a fan of the goo. I, I am. I'm definitely a big fan of goo. And uh, you don't have it. That's alright, as you're gonna see here, you probably would have killed him if you had a point in goo for the slow, but nonetheless, I'm okay with what you're going here. You got a wand, you have a soul ring, I really like the items you're buying, so, good start. Alright, so looking at your landing stage, I wouldn't say that you're doing anything particularly wrong right now. The only thing I'd point out is your CS isn't amazing. It's not bad though, right? So, uh, looking at the scheme in general, it's absurdly low, which makes me think it's on the lower end. <laughs> I'll try not to look at CS for most of the episode. <laughs> It's so easy to tell when you look at CS. I feel like it's just like, it's such a linear thing, but you were doing really well, which is great. Let's see how you amp efficiency, because honestly, like, I think the key to winning a Sprizzleback in, like, pubs is just learning how to stomp the lane, but, but, if you can't stomp the lane anymore, right, let's say it gets to the point where they just kind of can ignore you, or they have, like, a wand, right? I'm guessing these people have wands. Uh, all right, neither of them have a wand, but... Assuming they have a wand and they get to the point where they, you know, can just ignore you. Maybe Tidehunter hits his Morbid Mask timing, where he can just spam Anchor Smash and ignore you. Tidehunter can actually be pretty good against Bristle in that regard. Then you just leave and you start taking the side camp. Looks like this game you'll be more so focused on harassing, which isn't necessarily bad, but I do prefer when, when players focus on themselves in solo queue. At least for a while, right? I'm assuming that this is on the lower end, like Legend and below. I'm not saying Legend is low, it's average. But, yeah, let's keep going. So, going on the Tidehunter here, spamming your quills. You're doing a good job of using quills off cooldown. That's always very important. As menial as it sounds, I, I very often see Bristle players that will cast it, like, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 to 0.5 seconds after it comes off cooldown. And you're like, Speed, how does that matter? Do you actually care about that? Yes! I actually care a ton, like, how often you cast it here. I wish you would pop your Soul Ring, you Tango, and start building up stacks, right? It gives quite a bit of damage. 22 damage per stack. It's honestly ridiculous how much damage it gives. So I would be spamming quills more. Now here, right right away, I'm seeing an inefficiency. Uh, so let's go back 10 seconds. As you can see, when you push this in, the next thing you should understand is, okay, it's 1131. Because it's 1131, the next wave is only here, right? That's how you know if you need to stay for the next wave or not. You look at the clock and you say, oh, okay, waves spawn at 0 and 30, right? 0 and 30. So if it's a second after 30 or a second after 0, like one second, then you should just go farm something else, right? So here I'd push this in kill this, and then I would loop back up, kill the wave, maybe then go to this if I feel safe, or just go back, right? And you kind of run this pattern to get farmed, so I'm curious what you're doing, maybe you're farming this camp, what are you doing? Hello? Where are you going? Oh my god, you just walked to the secret shop to buy a vitality booster? Dude, there's couriers in this game. What kind of play is that just to use the courier? Hello? Where are you going? You just TP'd from secret shop to mid? Why don't you just farm the two camps and then- Why are you even here in the first place? You have a Minjikiro who needs to farm. Why are you just yoinking his farm? Guys, for everyone who's curious what he should be doing right now, just stay top. What do you do? Like, honestly, I hate when players do this. If you have a good lane, you don't need to rotate. Especially if you're a Bristleback. Your hero doesn't gank. Can you gank? Yeah, you can You can gank. You can show up the dives. But that's it. Only show up the dives. Even then, I wouldn't- I honestly wouldn't care and you would likely stomp your games if you just don't do this. Just push in top. Why? Because then, you can run the Tidehunter out of lane, you shut down Tide's farm, you amp your own farm, and you win! But you're not doing that. And so you're gonna- you're ganking a Wind Ranger! This is so impractical, kill the Ancients, oh my god, do something efficient! You're running out of Slark, how do you even kill this guy, doesn't he just pounce? Oh my god, this is such- <laughs> Stop! 
top! Just stay top! For everyone watching, if you're an offlane player and you win lane, just stay in your lane. I know that can sound crazy. Like, as long as your safe laner is doing fine, which you should be able to say, oh, is my safe laner doing fine? Gyro is 8, the offlane he is against is level 7. So he's doing fine. He doesn't need me. I am a hero that scales, therefore, I can have just as much impact if I farm as well. In fact, if you want to create space for the gyro, you can just run top, push in top, farm top, force rotations, blah 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 blah, and you're gonna win. And so, I'm gonna guess that the Bristleback, based upon his gameplay, this rotation is like a, a 0 out of 10 move, honestly, in my opinion, it's just terrible. It, it's running at heroes, you can't even kill his bristle, it's not like you have stuns for wind or slark. So, I'm gonna guess that this is Guardian 5. Here we go, Bristleback is... Uh, you are Herald 5. 280 matches. Okay, pretty new to the game. Looks like you actually ended up doing pretty well. Let's look at your overall item build. Vanguard, Hood. All right, I'm not, I'm really not a huge fan of Heart. I generally think that going Abyssal or Sanjinyasha is, is, is the play or Lotus or something like that. Or just at least finishing the Crimson. Like, yeah, I would consider finishing Crimson this game. I definitely would, but... Yeah, let's get into the next one. All right, getting into the next clip, we're going to be looking at Jibby, and he asked kind of like, why did I die in the laning stage? So guys, I'm going to quickly talk about in this clip, and then try to guess his rank about why he's dying in the laning stage, you know, what's going wrong. So, the first thing that I notice is this atrocious item build that is frankly the worst thing I've ever seen. You have a Bracer, which just does nothing. This item doesn't make you do a lot of damage, so you don't last to deny well, and it doesn't really keep you alive. Like, 4% magic resist is unbelievably underwhelming, and you don't need to be tanky, right? Being tanky in, in, early on is not that useful. You want to be sustainable, right? Because let's say you put a put a 400 HP hero against the 800 HP hero, but the 400 HP hero has 10 HP regen, and the 800 HP hero has 1, right? Who wins that lane? Clearly, it's the hero with 10 HP regen, unless somehow you could burst them down, right? Obviously, it's never that drastic, but that that's like a cool comparison and a way I like to think about it. So, Bracer, you don't need the HP early on. Right, you're not going to get bursted. You want to be sustainable and deadly, right? This is a winning lane. You don't need to sustain it. Uh, so frankly, if you die, that's not good. But you need to be able to eat a branch early on. And then the goal of this lane is just really to hit him, right? You don't... Oh my god, why would you do that? <laughs> what, what are you doing? Don't stand on his high ground. Okay, guys, anytime the creep wave is on the high ground, pull it back. Because then when you pull it back and he can test the range creep, what happens when Ember can test the range creep? What do you do to stomp them in the lane? You don't try to deny the range creep, you can if he isn't contesting it, but 9 times out of 10, they'll contest it, you just punch, 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 Q, punch, punch, and they're dead, right? That's how you win the lane. So, yeah, uh, okay, that Q is fine. Uh, but yeah, nonetheless, I just wish you had more regen, you just straight up let him deny the range creep, that's completely unacceptable. Guys, if you get your range creep denied, you don't even try to contest it, it just makes me depressed, unless it's literally gonna get you killed, like tossed under tower or something, so, yeah, I mean, you're not hitting this guy at all. Like, so yeah, I mean, you haven't pulled creep aggro once, you're you're not contesting the creeps properly, you're giving this guy free denies. And don't you understand that currently, if he's sitting under tower, he has plus three armor? That doubles his armor, right? Like, you need to pull the lane back so he can't just chill under tower, it also gives him one HP regen. And oh my god! <laughs> Dude, you hit him, you hit him when there's no creep. Oh my god, you just gave him another, how did he not get that? He should have denied you there. Oof, you're not shipping out any items. Why did he ship out a ring thing? Dude, like, guys... I can't get this across enough. Item builds are not complex. They are at the top level. Like, like when you get to 4k, 5k or something like that, you can start being like, oh, maybe I really need to change my build. Before then, please, just go the same build basically every single game. Are there adjustments you can make to win? Of course. Can you do it if you're below 4k? Of course. But things like this where you buy a bracer and then a ring, which a pro has literally never done once for good reason, you shouldn't either, alright? Like, I don't know why you would do this. Like, what makes you want to do this? Oh my god. Jibby. Jibby. I'm talking to you. Alright, I'm here to help you, alright man? I'm here to help you. You cannot say... What, what did the post say? I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong with the death. Is it because I'm playing the lane wrong? Okay, honestly, I respect that, right? But Dota is a game of small things. You're looking to see what you did wrong. And I, I really do appreciate that. You know, that's the first step. It actually is. If you get four creeps denied in a winning matchup, hit him three times and never pull creep aggro wands, you will never win the lane. Because if the wave's constantly on his hill, and you're not buying the correct items, you are doing everything you possibly could wrong. Honestly, I'm just being real. The only thing you've done right is eat, have shared tangos, which, I frankly, you didn't, I guess you don't even need against Ember, kind of. Uh, here, you should eat one of them. Okay, cool. But like, you're just out of mana, you're just getting completely destroyed in last hits, and if you bullied him better, he wouldn't be able to contest all these creeps, right? 
If you bullied him properly and pulled the wave back and didn't let him send on our tower, this wouldn't happen, right? But it does happen, and now he has literally eight denies. The reason why you die is because he's getting a level advantage in a favorable matchup. You're also missing last hits all the time, and therefore you just don't have resources. If you get the last hits and denies, you gain HP and mana, you win the lane. Also, once again, pull it back, pull it back, please, please, please. I'm gonna guess your rank. I think that this is, I think this is like Guardian 2. The Ember is playing really well though, which makes me feel like it's higher. So I don't know, I'm gonna say Guardian 2. Then you are Archon 5. My man. I'm, I'm not trying to be that guy, but like, you don't buy a stick, you rush a four staff with no wand, you buy a wand every single game. How do you do this? This is so bad. Like, I'm just being, it's so bad. You don't even buy a type of boots. You buy a late mana boots <laughs> before the mech. Oh, Chippy, Chippy, just copy a pro build. All right, so next up we will following Rattle Trap on the clockwork. Just for everyone, uh, as a heads up, this was a mid clockwork. I honestly picked it, I'm like, oh, we need some supporting. It turns out it's mid. Whatever, uh, a couple things. You go Vessel, I think it's okay. I'm not like, I don't think this is like a great Vessel game, but if I was to play mid clock, I would definitely consider this item to solo kill people. The only reason I don't think it's great is because they can purge it within rage and press the attack, so like, not a huge fan. Oh my god, 0-7. Oh god. All right, nonetheless, you're 7-1. and 1. Personally, I would buy a wand on this hero. I feel like it's like one of those, this is like one of those heroes you just want a wand. What the? How did that work like that? Are you dead now? This seems like a m massive overextension. Why didn't she duel you? Alright, somehow you're alive. TPing top, isn't this a bit risky? Don't you need some HP? I feel like you should have TP'd base there. You know, like, generally I'm not all for TPing base, but if I'm playing high tempo and I have no resources, no bottle charges, I'm probably gonna TP base, but nonetheless, you're going for a hook here. Yeah, I mean, alright. That happens. Looks like instead of going back to base, you're gonna ship clarities and such. Your team's roaching. Okay, just the pure fact that your team is roaching 22 minutes in instead of running high ground. This is relatively high, Mamar. I also like your movements. You know, the fact that you even considered going top there, it ended up actually being fairly decent. I think you would have solo killed the SF. Man, what are these hooks? Stop blind hooking! I hate clockworks who do this. It's like, just line it up! It's like the pudges who throw, uh, who like, throw blind hooks instead of just walking up and running. Like, why not wait a quarter of a second and then see her? I know she was trying to juke and drive anyway. Oh my... Ugh, ugh. Good denies. That is definitely not just pure inefficiency. I also would waste time denying cogs instead of going to the next place I want to go to. Makes sense. <laughs> alright, alright. Let's look at one more engagement here. Looks like you're going to mid. Going to Solar Crest. Yeah, it's a really good Solar Crest game. I, I like the Solar Crest for sure. I like it. You can buff up your bristle and troll so they can go high ground as well. So I'm a huge fan. Alright, your camera. Wait, what? I mean, I get why you're TPing, but like your team's kind of going high ground. I feel like, like, I don't think it's worth it to defend against a future TI winner. Hey, he's a future TI winner. He must be pretty dang good. But like your team's going high ground and he's pushing a tier two. It's not like this guy's threatening your fountain. Is he about to solo kill you as well? Bottle. Dude, you had so much time to bottle. Oh my God. I'm gonna say that that's okay because your team is not killing themselves. But the pure fact that your team didn't commit suicide high ground makes me feel like this is at least like ancient. Because most people would they'd be like, oh, no, 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 no. you know, just like yield the high ground and just like kill themselves. But that did not happen in your case, which is awesome. Going a bit deep, I will be honest, this is a bit deep for my liking. You're 18k ahead, 19, classic gamely fashion. Couldn't possibly submit an even game, you know. Wouldn't want to make yourself look slightly bad and be called out for it. Of course not. Of course not. Bane? My man Bane on the front line. I forgot that patch where they gave Bane plus 800 HP so that he could front line now. Alright. Fear. Just E. Okay, that works. You should click your E though. You're not really casting your E, but I don't even know what's going on. You're just overextending. You're like, your team is fighting when there's no racks. Like, I don't know what's going on. I'm just going to guess your rank. I'm pretty sure this is like ancient one or something because like your, your spell casting is like good, but like bad at the same time. It's weird. It's like you keep doing these small inefficiencies that make me want to like, you know, get a little bit angry. <laughs> uh, but okay. Uh, all right. All right. I'm going to, yeah, ancient one. Legend five. <laughs> 999 wins. Hey, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. But, uh, yeah, props to you. Looks like you went 12 and 3 on mid clockwork. That's impressive. I wouldn't expect you to really do well against an SF, but looks like you stomped them. So, good on you. And let's get into the next clip. And finally, let's take a look at One for All's gameplay. My man, he's buying fairy fires. You must be hungry for the fire. Looking for the smoke. Uh, I, I honestly think that this is way too many fairy fires. It doesn't really. I mean, it's not terrible. You know, it's not terrible, but. 
Personally, the eight tangos is a bit weird. Like, why did you only share one tango, not two? And on top of that, I feel like I'd rather have, you know, a branch or a salve instead of the extra tangos. You know, if I have a salve, I can give it to my jug if he needs it. You know, that's going to be far better than having eight tangos when you could just ship out more tangos if you need them, right? You're not going to, it's not like you're going to run out of eight quickly. But the reason why you never really see this is for that reason. You can just ship them out. So not a huge fan of this. I personally would also maybe consider branches, which I could invest into a wand later on. That also help me trade. So, yeah. Not, do I think this build is terrible? No. Do I think it's the best? Also, no. Alright, so getting to Brainsap. Brainsap is an interesting one. Looks like the axe is disconnected. I hope he comes back. <laughs> Alright guys, this is actually really funny. So, <laughs> the Bane is trading. And this is funny to me because the axe is disconnected. But the Bane actually makes a mistake. And because the axe disconnects, they actually trade better. Because as I've talked about in a lot of videos, the key to trading in the laning stage in dual lanes, uh, like 2v2, is to... 2v1 people, right? That That's how you fundamentally win trades. So it's funny because the, the Enchantress actually decides to control the axe and you make a mistake while walking forward here, which actually costs you half your health, right? That that one step costed you literally 150 health and you do it again. You make two mistakes in a row and all of a sudden this disconnected axe is actually dumping on you. Go <laughs> out of God Gamer the is. So, you know, you're doing a good job with the brain saps. You know, I like it. The fact that you aren't eating a tango right now is atrocious. Uh, by the way, it is a Tango glitch. This is the current Tango. So when it runs out, you need to instantly E1. I know, I know I'm being picky, but I really do think it's a big deal. You can't take this long to eat Tangos. Like, every single time you take an extra second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, that's the amount of time you can't spend trading. And Bane wants to win the trade early on. So my main gripes with this lane, uh, it's not actually your... It looks like you're going to kill this guy. But it's not actually your uh, overall decision to trade. I actually like that you're coming around from the bottom. I think that's fantastic. Most players just run through the creep wave. They grief the wave. They grief their carry. Uh, if you are a Bane or an Ogre or an Undying, I do recommend because you're tanky coming in from the bottom side, zoning out the four one-on-one. -on -one. Just don't aggro the creeps. But yeah, your movement was terrible. It costed you. It nearly cost you to the lane, right? It nearly costed you you dying. Wow, look at that. Look at the fairy flowers. Ooh. Wow. Uh, but the problem is now you've invested all your, your resources in two kills, which is, frankly, a bit meh, right? So, bad movement, and then the fairy, you, the fairy fire is like, I know it's cool, you get a double kill, but it's like, now you've invested all this gold, and dude, you're committing suicide and not buying out? What am I watching? Buy out! Ah! Oh wait, no, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Don't blame me. But uh, you buy another fairy fire? Man, this is too much. Just buy two branches. Like, if you had no fairy fires, I'd be like, alright, you're buying one, that's okay, but like, just buy some branches, dude. Like... Don't you feel like you need them or something? Oh my god, you bought another! You absolute fiend! <laughs> the Fairy Fire King is here, one for all. Are, are you the one that's buying all the tangos? I mean, that would make sense, but okay. It's a lot of mana, like, now you're just out of mana. Like, I'd rather have an extra Brain Sap with a Clarity, or like, two extra Brain Saps with a Clarity than, like... The only reason why you're winning is because they're bad. Like, I, I don't think people realize this sometimes, but the only reason why he's getting away with this... Not saying what he's doing is bad, I actually really love the fact... Like, you're casting Brain Sap really, really well. Like, great, I give you like a 9 out of 10 for Brain Saps. You're eating Tangos generally well. I give you like a 7 out of 10. The way you're trading, I would give you like a 5 out of 10. The movement is where things get skeptical. You know, like, I don't feel like you're reacting well enough. And then we talked about the earlier movement that griefed you. But nonetheless, you've done a really good job setting lane for your Jug. I like your movement. I'm not like a huge fan of what you're doing with the build. But nonetheless, I, I just want to look at the laning stage. Let's guess up the rank. And I'm going to say that this, I think it's pretty high. I'm getting like Legend Ancient vibes. Is there more fairy fires? More? Did you really need three more? Really? Like, you're three and one, and you're second in net worth. Second to the lowest. Not saying a Bane needs net worth, right? But there's other items that win the lane, like branches and salves, that give you, like, more sustainability and can be scaled into other items. I know salves can't. Right? There's no blue salve, but... You get the point. All right, I'm going to say that this is Legend 1. I love your trading. I just, just, it, this gives me weird vibes. I want to say, like, honestly, your, some of your trading makes me want to say Divine, but like, this Fairy Fire nonsense is like, so meh. All right, and you are... Archon 1. Okay, like, you go, you go from stomping this lane to having a 4 staff at minute... I mean, not that this is that bad on Bane. Once again, you're a sack support. It's a hard Bane game. Like, I hate playing Bane against PL. It's not fun. Even though this guy is ridiculously in our farm. Holy, good thing I didn't look at the CS. I don't like playing Bane against PL. It's it's a really good hero against Axe. I love Bane against Axe. That's good. It's okay against Enchantress as well. That matchup's pretty decent. But nonetheless, Archon 1. You've really got to work on this build. It's it's just too meme -y. You're falling behind. You never bought a stick, which is makes me slightly depressed. You also could have bought a Windlace after Tranquils to be more mobile. 
frankly, positioning is everything on Bane. So yeah, I would buy a wand so I could actually stay alive, right? In the mid-game fights, you want to actually live. And uh, that's going to be all for today's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, I would appreciate a like on the video. Thank you for watching to the end. It really does actually help me out a ton. In fact, that's the most important thing when it comes to YouTube, for anyone who doesn't know, especially watch time. Um, even more important than likes. So if you watch to the end of the video, it actually helps me out a ton. I appreciate it so much for everyone who does. And I really do hope you're enjoying, obviously, the content. That, that, that would be the reason why. Hopefully the largest reason why you'd be watching to the end. You're learning about the game of Dota. This is what I've been doing for six years now, just studying Dota. And I hope you can uh, learn from me as well. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And peace. Before you leave, just want to say a quick message. If you're trying to get better at Dota or you just enjoyed that video, uh, I know this is pretty general and you're going to hear this quite a bit from me but I recommend you sign up to GameLink.com. Why? Because I put a lot of effort into the content over there, and generally the effort I do there is different from the content you're gonna see here on YouTube. It is different. In fact, I usually go a lot more in depth on topics or into niche topics that help you get to the next level even faster. Because on YouTube, I, I often have to keep it more mainstream. And that's even why I'm putting it at the end of this YouTube video. That's why this is at the end, because a lot of people just watch five minutes, they skip through just for like the dopamine spike. But if you are interested in actually getting better at Dota, I recommend you go to the description down below, get your discount right now by clicking the link, sign up, use the discount code that you're going to see there. And I hope to see you there right now. So click it. And uh, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.